YouTube, it's Tom. I'm back with another one for you. <clears throat> and this one is a book called Dealing with Presentments. And it's probably about the same length as the last one, as the last book. Um, awesome information in this. We're going to run through this shit. Uh, so you can get a good understanding of what exactly an offer is and how, uh, how you're perception ultimately dictates the outcome of any of these circumstances because uh, they can go either way so let's get into this so dealing with presentments so part one background context and underpinnings <clears throat> so whenever you receive a presentment of any kind from a traffic ticket to a bill to a summons or indictment there are two basic and diametrically opposite ways to think about the matter i.e. you can think of receiving a presentment as an event that will cost you and be a loss to you or two is a gift to you and can enrich you so because every you know every offer that you get is really an offer coming from a corporation uh, and it's going to have value so you learn how to operate as a private banker you can go ahead and just accept that offer value and deposit that i would imagine right if somebody had the skills to do so <clears throat> so everything in life is a matter of perception our challenges are usually the result of ignoring what we are confronted with rather than endeavoring to discern how best to act uh, more with adequate knowledge and understanding. We assume rather than know. Consequently, if we would have any chance of succeeding vis-a-vis -vis presentment, we must first have some basic understanding of the, uh, of the system within which the issuance, interpretation, and enforcement of the presentments occur. The following mini analysis of the legal system may be helpful in this regard. Uh, and the one Ching uh, is a remarkable statement. <clears throat> so apparently that's a book. So the superior man goes only down, goes only into his own domain. As a Frederick Bestey said in a similar vein, minding one's own business is the only moral law. The conundrum, of course, is how to live in peace with uh, and freedom in a world in which we are besieged by exercises and interminable, relentless, long-standing, and incredibly brilliant schemes of rulership, slavery, and exploitation that have plagued mankind throughout history uh, and that aggressively intrude themselves unilaterally into all areas of our lives, spiritual, emotional, mental, social, and economic. This renders living in a live-and-let-live live manner uh, on this planet difficult and impossible without sufficient knowledge. <clears throat> the fact that law consists of rules revolving around the use of deadly force as a powerful incentive to become as clear as possible concerning the nature of the legal and commercial system governing the world. We must remember that to assume makes an ass out of you and me. In the case of law, acting on false knowledge, i.e. ignorance, can be fatal. This is enormously complicated by the fact that the legal system is colorable, i.e. phony. It may appear real, but nothing is as it appears, just as in Alice in Wonderland. To assume that the appearance as genuine and dependable is to act on illusion instead of truth. One cannot have peace with those who hold aggression in their hearts and are not interested in love, freedom, harmony, truth, or any of the other higher values of man that most people uh, revere and would cherish, seeing, would cherish seeing established in the community of man. One. Alice in Wonderland was written as a satire on the legal system, where things are ever changing, are a ever changing mirage, and nothing is as it appears. The state of the heart is that is what counts in this equation. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. The good people are disarmed in any advance by an inability to comprehend the mentality of deliberate. And let's see what we got here. Deliberate predators, usually regarding problems in dealing with such aggressors as misunderstandings that can be cleared up through sufficient communication. It is often not easy for good people to understand that there are those uh, who, who know the difference between good and evil and deliberately choose the latter. Deliberately choose the latter. The significance of this law is profound. Uh, <clears throat> as your adversary is sincere, truthful, fair, and honorable about what he is doing, i.e. interested in uncovering and dealing justly with the truth, then you are probably operating on parallel tracks. Uh, in such case, the discord or conflict is the result of misunderstanding or lack of communication and disappears when both sides realize what is happening. If, however, your adversary is operating from a covert stance with deliberate 
deceit, concealment, misrepresentation, bad faith, and aggression in his heart. The dispute is real uh, and will not be resolved amicably, uh, amicably which means uh, peacefully or civilly, and requires exposure of the facts to the light of the day by providing su uh, sufficient evidence. Further significance of the importance Further significance of the importance of subjective contradiction and intent of the heart is that all law is contract, uh, and the essence of and core of any contract is agreement. Without a genuine agreement consisting of a true meeting of the minds uh, and mutual understanding by all parties of all terms and conditions to which the parties are agreeing to be bound by, there is no contract. Derivatives and the nature of the legal system. The powers that be turn everything into a tool and a weapon to be used in their unceasing attempt to triumph by playing win-lose games against their fellow man. One of the most powerful, magical, and difficult to detect tools and weapons used against mankind by aggressors and exploiters is language. Allegedly, the word phonetics derives from the phonetics purportedly stemming from the Phoenicians who gave us a langug ag, uh, a word uh, referencing a substance that when fired from the cannon of a ship tore the sails in mass uh, and left the opponent dead in the water. Obviously, words are extremely powerful weapons and using them for conquest and rulership uh, proposes uh, purposes is what the legal system is about. Uh, ideas concerning the nature and use of language are law, uh, in law are set forth inter ala in a uh, discourse entitled legal fictions. So, and you know that they use words as a weapon. And so rather than changing the law, they just change the definition. Really that, you know, really that simple. It's not even that complicated. So the fiction as a linguistic phenomenon. Uh, I hearing one said the history of the law could write as a model over her first chapter and the sentence in the beginning was the word. Students of the legal fiction might also take this model to heart for certainly it is a truth commonly overlooked that the fiction is a disease or affection of the language miscommunication essentially so anyone who has who has thought about the legal fiction must be aware that it that it presents an illustration of the all pervading power of the word this uh that a statement which is disbelieved by its author and his audience can have significant at all uh, can't have significant at all evidence enough uh that we are in contract with the mysterious influence exercised by the names and symbols and that the sense the fiction is a linguistic phenomenon so what is a legal fiction? The influence of the fiction extends to every department of the juror's activities, yet it cannot be said that the circumstance has caused the legal profession much embarrassment. Laymen frequently complain of the law that very seldom complain that it is founded upon fictions. Okay, so that's the thing. I mean, you can complain about the issue or you can get to the bottom of it and figure out how the fuck that they're doing it. And, that's what, and so that was my, my little uh, quest that I went on was to figure out how they're getting away with it and this is how. Is because you know you complain about them fucking you know up about the law but not really ever speaking on the fact that the law is built on a house of uh cards you know what i'm saying so they are more apt to express discontent when the law has refused to adopt what they regard as an expedient and desirable fiction uh perhaps to the strangeness of the boldness of the legal fiction has tended to stifle his criticisms and has no doubt often led him to agree modestly with the writer of the shepherd's touchstone that the subject matter of law is somewhat transcendent and too high for ordinary capacities and so you know they talk and so basically what they're saying there is that you know they talk shit about people not knowing the law but they write it in such a multifaceted multifaceted fucking maze that i'm even amazed that anybody can understand the fucking thing to be 100 percent honest I, you know i'll just be real with you honestly <laughs> I don't even know how the fuck people can even wrap their minds around it. And I think it's purposely designed for people not to be able to. So that's why it's so tough for everybody. So anyway, at another, at another place, the only defense he can find is the doubtful one of recrimination. When he points out that the common law fictions were no worse than the numerous fictions of the Roman law. A fiction distinguished from a lie. Maine's classical definition of the historical fiction as any assumption which conceals or affects to conceal the fact that rule of law has undergone alteration remains unchanged uh, its operation being modified 19 being modified its operation being modified seems to leave room for the intent to deceive and that's what i'm telling you so they just changed the definition instead of having to change the laws so the english courts were in the habit of pretending that a shadow might uh might in fact have been taken from the plaintiff by force have been found uh had been found by the uh defendant 
Why? In order to allow an action which otherwise would not have lain. If this fiction does not deceive, of what purpose is it? So what he's saying is that the purpose of a fictional name is to deceive. And uh, if that was not the purpose, then really what would be the purpose? So essentially admitting that that is the purpose of a fiction with the fictional characters as Lengus that they create is to deceive. Otherwise you would put it in a different name, wouldn't you? So, you know, why, why would you make it look exactly like, come on, cut it out. So it is easy to conclude uncharitably that the judge who enlarges his jurisdiction or who changes a rule of law under a cover of fiction is very coolly uh, and calculatingly choosing to hide from the public the fact that he is legislating. So a fiction distinguished from an erroneous conclusion. A fiction is genuinely distinguished from a erroneous conclusion or in scientific fields from a false hypothesis by the fact that it is adopted by its author with knowledge of its falsity. A fiction is an expedient but consciously false assumption. So that's the difference. Erroneous conclusion meaning that you made an error was not willingly a fiction is something where you deliberately create a fiction for the purpose of tricking somebody. So as living, physical, biological, sentient beings, we are real. We exist as aspects of existence. The system, on the other hand, is an abstract creation of the mind. It is the realm of words, symbols, ideas, laws, contracts, etc., where the circuit exists through the uh, where the circuit exists through which the current currency flows in accordance with the rules and laws of commerce. So manifest existence emerges into form and substance out of nothingness uh, of the unmanifest. All creation, therefore, is derivative. The created is derived from the creator. Creator and the created are different meta levels or logical types from each other. The eternal absolute has no finite properties. From any relative perspective, the absolute is neither co cognizable nor perceivable and must be described in accordance with what is not, uh, such as the void, unbounded, changelessness. So while the unmanifest is changeless, manifest, exi uh, manifest existence is endless, non-repeating, unique, and non-repeatable changes. Well, you know, I beg to differ slightly on that because, you know, my stance on this whole uh, realm in general is a little different than that. I think everything is scripted, to be honest with you. So non-repeatable, I don't know about that. So it is the non-possible that any configuration of anything in creation is ever exactly the same as it ever was or ever will be or ever will be a split fraction of a second later or ever could be. So, yeah, so I, I guess if you look at it in the, in the sense of a wave, then it could never be the same. It could never technically repeat because you're in a whole different a whole different wavelength at that point. So no man can walk twice into the same river. Everything is process and pattern. Uh, energy and motion in particular forms orbit paths and uh, circuitries that are every infinitesimal un uh, instant and unique. Furthermore, uh, furthermore, the further removed manifest creation is from the source, the more derivative and impotent it is. So that which the mind through sensory experience and all relative processes uh, regards as physical reality that is solid, real, and substantive is an actuality most illusory. And so, I mean, I definitely freaking agree with that too because it's definitely a holographic reality here. So the more subtle, insubstantial, and elusive level of manifestations one access, the more real and potent it is. Since, uh, since it is less derivative and closer to the source, this can be illustrated by observing the history of science, perhaps uh, most dramatically exemplified by the development of weapons, as man has gone from weaponry involving the gross physical, club spears, catapults, etc., to the more subtle strata, which is what they use now, which is like the mind control and things of that nature, right? More mind control than guns and clubs and shit, right? So chemical level where the gunpowder operates toward the atomic and subatomic um, domains, the more energy is liberated. So although neither the absolute nor the relative is actually cognizable by the mind, that does not stop just about everyone from engaging in popular game um, of thinking otherwise. The mind form concepts about the source, none of which is either remotely or faithful uh, map, nor the territory that is purportedly mapping, as well as aspects of the relative. To satisfy the mind's need to know, man lives in the foolish idea that his conceptions of existence, whether in the absolute or relative, are true and that they are fixed pictures, patterns, and conclusions derived from some finite vantage point. <laughs> That's funny, man. So largely through acquired experience and sensory perceptions. 
uh, have captured the thing it's, itself. So he's basically saying, how are you going to try to figure out what's outside of the box when you're in it, essentially, right? So is it as silly as taking progressive snapshots of the ocean and its waves, thereby thinking that it has cognized and captured the ocean? Or speculating from outside the door what is inside a room which one is not impre which one is not present the living on the basis of one's speculations as if they were absolute the state of man's development we call an ego conscious state as opposed to unconscious in which the life uh, is simply lived or self-conscious in which a man is consciously aware of the absolute and rel and and relative as they actually are rather than uh, in his mind thinks about or cognizant um, cognizant or recognizing them if you will so the ego conscious state or mistaking abstract constructions of the mind for reality and thereafter building careers institutions securities and governments thereon is idolatry and that's what it is because the whole government in general is a fucking religion you got i mean you have to know that so it is idol worship and that's exactly what it is every time you go there and vote for these motherfuckers what do, what do you think you're doing bro think about that so by giving credence and superiority to concepts about something such as God rather than the reality of the thing itself, one worships or pay homage to, reveres, and depends on graven images. Graven images of the mind are just as much idols as indeed necessarily precede the construction of any idols of wood or stone. Man's penchant to think that uh, he has cognized the uncognizable and worse yet, um, mistake his own cognitions for, uh, for that which he thinks are cognized. Uh, but has not is only idolatry but may be responsible for more discord carnage suffering and wars than any other single aspect of human life it might well be said that god the eternal source created man in his own image as a conscious spiritual being with power to create and may return the compliment as pace quipped to die for an idea uh is a pretty high price to pay <laughs> to pay for conjecture so to just to go just based on an idea right and everybody does it. So the goal of any Zen master, for instance, is to bring people to a conscious state where they no longer, uh, where they no longer, in the words of Gr Gregory Bateson, eat the menu and leave the dinner. So until one sees and lives reality as it actually is, he is mistaking what he regards as reality, i.e. what his mind through his senses perceives and thinks about existence for reality itself. So he mistakes the map for the territory since the senses are enormously limited conclusions about reality reached by the mind are fantasy the senses are liars and deceivers uh, we would perceive reality in a vastly different manner for instance if we could view existence through the entire electromagnetic spectrum instead of the extremely narrow range in which uh, it is that we see colors exist and there is such a wide spectrum of um, frequencies and colors which is the same thing that we cannot see and, and I think we would be overwhelmed and overloaded. I mean, if our skin was transparent and we could see through it, we would be fucking mind blown as to how the fuck we're even standing here right now. The shit is crazy. When you see like what we really are, the whole nervous system and the veins and all that's crazy. So the practical consequences of all this is that in a man's ego conscious state, he lives as a fraudulent and fictitious life. It is, uh, it is one of illusions, delusions by living in accordance with the preposterous belief that his conceptualizations are both accurate and real when they are neither. Man not only lives but relates with others, uh, often dogmatically and violently, on the basis of believing that the imposter is genuine, and as much as law itself is a subset of the working of a man's mind. So what else can law be other than that which it is an expression, i.e., of fictions and frauds? Moreover, since, the all, uh, since all of this occurs within and as a derivative expressions of the ever-changing uh, relative, law cannot be, either, uh, cannot be other than ever-changing, So, which would make it a fiction. So a summary of the points of the consequence of the above, including following are language has power and magic because of man's ego-conscious state. Uh, I think it's more too because of the uh, vibrations and frequencies that that are coming out of your mouth, right? Or, or out of your portal, if you will. So the powers that be deliberately utilize language in man's ego conscious condition for administering power and exploitation. The entire legal, the entire legal system is a word game played by the designers and operators of the legal system for the purposes of power and plundering. And I would agree. And I mean, it serves, you know, it serves itself well. We can say that safely. So, I mean, it's fucking the system works, but it's fucking grimy. Exploitation and enslavement uh, with unending exercises of destructive physical force applied against living beings on the basis of 
meanings artificially imparted to the words used. So they're tricking you into these contracts by changing the language, essentially. So mistaking the different meta levels of existence itself, i.e. making the map of the territory, is not only delusion, but when it comes to law, it is a disaster. Authority for, the, uh, for using deadly legalized violence against one's person is attached to the results of the error. So four, our difficulties often arise from our acting in a manner that results in people enforcing the fictions and fraud by, syst by systematic and ruthless application of uh, legalized violence, damaging the real us. Then whatever is happening in the systems becomes substantive in our physical lives. So this is how the fictions are kind of uh, crossing lines from where they exist, which is in the fictional realm, right into the reality affecting you physically now. You see what that is? It's just because you don't know. So everything, or because you expect things to happen a certain way, so then they do, right? So everything in existence can be viewed, perceived, and thought about in an infinite number of ways, by an infinite number of beings, for an infinite number of possible reasons. Not, uh, not only are no two of any of these things the same, but could not be identical even if anyone so wished. Concepts, maps can be fixed, creation, the territory cannot. So it is impossible uh, in the ever-changing realm of creation for any subset thereof, uh, such as man, even remotely to fathom, comprehend, and know, let alone verbalize the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. We might define truth, capital T, as the actual way things are, i.e. the thing itself, uh, to use Kant's terms or in suchness uh, to a Buddhist characterization. This totally and uh, actual, this totally and actual and actually is not finitely knowable, both because of the unimaginable vastness, because no two split instants are ever the same. The same word designated as truth, lowercase t, might be defined as an accurate abstract mapping of something or event, such as if one is given a map that allegedly shows where a treasure is buried and digs at the spot indicated, he will either find or not find the treasure. It is far. Uh, it is found, we say, the map is inaccurate and the author thereof the truth. So the map is not the truth, but it depicts the truth. So if the treasure is not found, we say that the map was false or inaccurate and that the author was either the error or lie, or someone removed the treasure subsequently to making the truth of the map, right? Instead of just realizing that it could simply be user user error. Or that or that the map was not real, but it but it was based on truth, right? Something like the Bible. So man's capacity for mapping uh, reality through creation or abstract symbols, such as numbers and words, is, like, is likewise derivative. Anyone can observe or think about anything and create, concoct whatever designation of letters and symbols and sounds he may wish for classifying, categorizing, or identifying a particular thing and referencing it in his own mind or communicating it to others by speech, writing, or some other means. So, and... The same thing with the words and all that too, you know, playing with the words, switching them up. So they actually mean something else, but they have you believe that it, that it, that it doesn't mean that. So the legal system, like reality, likewise consists of the flow of energy in accordance with the patterns of its design. In the case of the legal system, both the designer of the circuitries and the current that flows therein are different than, uh, than that of given existence with their respect to the universe. The designer is the creator. However, anyone may think that the ineffable source of all of all that exists and the current that flows is universal energy and is ultimately unknowable and undefinable by any relative means concerning the legal system and the, and the uh, designer is man. The current that flows in the circuits of the system is called currency. So there are very few types of legal entities existing today. They are fundamentally corporations, trust partnerships, and sole proprietorships. The IRS Code Act 26 USC 7701.01A lists seven classes of legal persons that uh, seven classes of legal persons uh, that additional three to four fundamental ones being an association, a state, and a company. What defines each of these are uh, what defines each of these and distinguishes each from the other, as well as determines how the system deals with them, is this is the schematic defining how the currency flows in the uh, circuitry. Money embodies more laws and commercial principles than any other single thing, whereby infrasar, uh, as the world is concerned, it may be reasonably ca uh, characterized as the measure of all things. Money, the measure of all things. So... So the, so the legal terms, number nine. So legal terms and phrases are artificially imbued with the particular meaning and significance of those who define the legal terms who, ha who have considerably different meanings and the same words do have in ordinary parlance. 
The system, in short, is a word game. Words and law are artificially assigned to meanings that are completely different than the actual object or item, right? And so that's what I'm telling you. So that's why you compare the Compare the different dictionaries, and even if you think you know what a word means, look it up in the law dictionary, and you're going to see it probably means something else. So it is a game of chess. It really is. Stop playing checkers with these clowns. And that's what I got for you for now. Until we meet again.